Welcome back to Scene in 15. Please like and subscribe so I can get better writers to write these scripts. Have you seen You Are Never Really Here? It's a 2017 crime drama about a veteran who tracks down missing girls for a living. His latest job leads him to uncover a conspiracy. The film begins with the child's voice counting down until it says, You must do better. Immediately after we see Joe, who is asphyxiating himself with a plastic bag, he gets up, burns a picture of a schoolgirl, cleans a hammer, and removes the bloody plastic bag that was covering it. He snaps some SIM cards and packs up a golden necklace with Sandy on it, some duct tape, zip ties, and some other items. He waits for someone to walk past in the corridor and leaves his motel room. Joe gets in a taxi and goes to the airport while checking if anyone is following him. At the airport, he uses a payphone. An answering machine for John McCleary picks up and Joe leaves the message. It's done. Afterwards, he heads back home to where his mom is asleep in front of the TV. Joe takes off her glasses, and we find out that she was just playing a trick on him. They both start laughing. Joe puts her to bed, and she asks him to stay for a while. He goes to his room and puts some frozen peas on a bruised shoulder. He reads, and then sits on his bed with a shocked expression after seeing a flashback. Then, while lying down, he opens his mouth and slowly lowers a knife into it. But his mother then calls for him, as she can't find her toothbrush. Outside the bathroom, he drops the knife above his foot and pulls it away at the last second. He gets frustrated at his mother as she has made a mess in the bathroom and sends her downstairs while he cleans up. He heads out down to the street to a local grocery store and walks through the stockroom, where Angel, the owner, hands him an envelope from a hole in the ceiling. Joe gives Angel his share of the money. Angel tells him that the man wants to see him right away. Joe asks Angel if his son said he saw him. Angel says no, but Joe says we're done and leaves. Joe returns home, spends some time with his mother and cleans out the fridge of rotten food. His mother asks him, how is Janice, Joe's girlfriend from 20 years ago? Joe decides he needs some more plastic bag therapy in his closet and has a flashback of him and the kid hiding in the closet while his parents fight. Next, Joe is on the train platform leaning over the track. He doesn't jump, as he then arrives at McCleary's office, which is filled with flowers, gifts from the florist's parents of a girl who they helped find. Joe tells McCleary, who has a serious nosebleed, that they aren't working with Angel anymore, and then asks why he is here. McCleary explains that the state senator, Albert Vato's daughter, Nina, has been missing all weekend and doesn't want to call the cops as he is running on Governor Williams' ticket. Vato is paying 50 grand cash and they have a lead from an anonymous text with an address. McCleary wants to take Joe out on his boat with steaks and beers after they get paid. Joe doesn't hear him. Joe goes to meet Vato, who tells him he has heard of these places with underage girls. Joe reassures him that he will get her if she's there. Vato says McCleary told him that Joe is brutal. Joe says he can be. He takes some Polaroid pictures of Nina and then hands Vato an address and tells him to be there at 3 a.m. Hotel Carib, room 701. Vato tells Joe that he wants him to hurt them. Joe rents a car and some cool music comes on while he looks for the address. He finds it and drives off to a car park. At a convenience store, he has the same flashback from earlier. He asks himself, what am I doing? And then goes to get himself a new toy, a hammer. While he's walking down the street, a group of girls ask him to take a picture of them. He stares at their smiling mouths, making us think he has a fetish until they turn into screams and we realize it's his trauma. Another split second flashback and Joe is looking exhausted sitting by a road. He goes to get some drugs, but the dealer is late. Joe complains that he's been waiting for 20 minutes. The man tells him to relax and chill the F out. Doesn't this guy know Joe is brutal? They make the exchange and Joe lets him know that he doesn't like to be late. Joe then goes to relax in a sauna, and we finally see why he's traumatized by that memory. It shows when he was in the army, he gave a little girl some chocolate, and a little boy shot her and took it. He stares at himself in the mirror and sings an alphabet song to feel good again. Back on the road, he heads back to the apartment to stake it out 
He has a smoke and enjoys the rain until he sees a young man enter the apartment. Another flashback where he finds a container of dead bodies where they're probably being trafficked. John sees the young man leave the apartment, pretends to ask for directions, but then shows him he's brutal. <laughs> John sees the young man leave the apartment, pretends to ask for directions, and then shows him he's brutal. <laughs> John sees the young man leave the apartment, pretends to ask for directions, but then shows him he's brutal and puts him in the car. He asks him about the security of the building. A man tells him that there are two men, one at the door and one on the top floor. He asks for access to the building and the young man gives him code. Then he chokes him out. We watch from the security cameras as Joe pukes at the front door before bringing in his brutality. He hammer times the door <laughs> <laughs> oh. He hammer times the doorman and heads upstairs. Hammer times upstairs guy. <laughs> hammer times the upstairs guy and a loyal customer of the establishment. Joe finds Nina and introduces himself. A woman discovers them. Joe calms her down and takes her phone. He takes Nina down a corridor and sees another naked loyal customer. He tells Nina to close her eyes, but she doesn't. Joe shows the guy that he can't touch this. Outside, Joe takes out the choked out young man out of his car and drives off with Nina. They stop at a car park. Joe offers Nina a drink, but Nina just hugs him. Then she starts to kiss him, and Joe tells her she doesn't have to do that. Joe takes Nina back to his motel, walks past a distracted receptionist, and drives her off from the rain. The TV is on, and there is breaking news about Senator Vato leaping to his death from the 20th second floor of a hotel suite. He tries to comfort Nina and turn her away from the TV. Suddenly there is a noise coming from the door. He opens the door to the receptionist, whose brains get splattered all over Joe's face. The splatterer makes Joe sit on the bed next to Nina, while his partner comes in and takes Nina. They are cops. Joe distracts the splatterer mid-sentence, pushes a coffee table into him while getting shot in the face and rear naked chokes him on the ground, but then decides to snap his neck. He heads out of a window fire exit. He then pulls out one of his teeth as he was shot in the face. He laughs at the irony of his survival and then calls McCleary, but he doesn't answer. Joe goes to McCleary's house. He enters cautiously, finds a gun, ices his face, and plays with a cat. Then he notices some blood on the kitchen floor, so he immediately goes to McCleary's office. While waiting in the elevator, he hears some voices and has another flashback. Then Joe sits in front of a dead McCleary, whose hands have been destroyed. He sees Angel's contact card on the desk and calls, Unlucky Angel. Joe leaves and has a mental breakdown in McCleary's car. He keeps repeating his father's words, stand up straight, and we discover that Joe inherited his hammer time abilities from his father. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And we discover that Joe inherited his hammer time abilities from his father. He returns home, climbs onto the roof, and sneaks into his mother's room. But he's too late. She lies dead from a bullet through her pillow. Joe silently holds his anger and despair and takes off her bloody glasses. He sneaks downstairs like he used to sneak to avoid his father. He shoots two shots. One man is dead and the other starts crawling under a table. Joe leads him into the kitchen and pours himself a glass of water while the man catches up. Joe asks him which one of them killed his mother. He then gives the man a painkiller and asks him if they killed Vato. He explains Vato wanted out. Joe then asks where Nina is. He tells him he's with Governor Williams, as she is his favorite, and he trades the girls. They lie on the kitchen floor together and sing a song, and the man holds Joe's hand as he dies. Joe then wraps his mother's body up, puts on a suit, and brings her to a lake nearby. He takes her deep underwater and lets her go. It seems like he will stay underwater until he hears Nina counting and has a vision of Nina underwater and swims back up to the surface. After dumping McCleary's car, Joe takes a train home where he hears Nina counting again and imagines how Vato jumped and how Nina was treated. It is clear to him that Vato was in it with Governor Williams. Joe goes to Governor Williams' office and follows him back to his mansion, 
where he has a photo collection of all the young girls. This guy needs to be hammer timed. <laughs> Joe does just this to some guards as he makes his way through the gardens and the kitchen. He heads upstairs, past some paintings that fit Governor Williams' theme. He arrives at the pink bedroom to find Governor Williams' throat slashed. Joe has another breakdown as he didn't get to hammer time and strips. He walks around the mansion with his top off. He sees visions of his late mother and his young self. He eventually finds Nina in the dining room, eating peas with her fingers. Next to her is a bloody straight razor. Joe approaches her slowly, and Nina tells him it's okay. They go to a diner and discuss where they want to go. Neither of them know. Nina suddenly gets up. Joe feels the intensity of his loneliness, cries and blows his brains out. Nobody in the cafe reacts. Nina returns and we find out that it was all a dream. Word up magazine. They agree it's a beautiful day. And Joe finishes his milkshake. Oh, sweet. Now you've seen it. And remember kids, if you're attracted to kids, can you touch this? <laughs>